Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So this week, what we're gonna have for you is some more machinery shuffle and some shop organization. I finally take a little bit of time uh, on a particular weekend to try to get a bunch of stuff done around here that I was trying to do. A lot of heavy metal moving, moving some stuff around. Like I said, some shop organization. I wanna move the uh, rotary bennets over here, over there and want to move the shaper around and I got some heavy iron that I'm moving we got all kind of stuff I'm uh, shuffling around so uh, that's what this episode is going to be about this week okay but I got plenty of other projects coming at you real soon all right we're working on the welding cart and I've got a, another project which you'll you'll see in this episode uh, what I've what I've got here and uh, yeah so I hope you guys enjoy my uh, my hard labor in this episode I actually am excited to uh, share with you that we decided that this weekend, whenever you're actually watching this, Abby and I was going to take a long weekend and we're going to be headed up to Huntsville, Alabama to go to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center up there. And I'm um, really looking forward to that trip. Had a lot of people recommend that and I've known about it for years and years and I've never been there before to be my very first trip to Huntsville and uh, we're excited about it so we're looking forward to having a couple of days off and seeing some new places and having some new adventures so i plan on taking some video of us up there and what we see and i hope to share some of that here on this channel as well all right so i had a visitor this week and uh, his name is thomas and thomas and his, and his parents as well are in the u.s vacationing for almost a month they're here i believe he said for three and a half weeks and they're, they're from Denmark. So they come over and they've been traveling all throughout the Southeast uh, United States, going to a lot of places. This is their very first trip here. And he has been a long time viewer of my YouTube channel. And he emailed me a while back and asked if he could stop by and meet me and see the shop. And that's what we did. So we, uh, I visited with Thomas and his dad. And while he was here, it was, it was a great conversation uh, learning about their uh, their culture uh, over in Denmark and uh, talking about their uh, you know their tax system over there and how expensive it is but he uh, he brought a couple goodies to me and I wanted to share this with you some of you guys overseas might recognize some of this stuff right here so we have a, a tap and drill set it's a metric uh, Ruko is the brand brand new to me I've never heard of that before but high quality set of cutting tools right here and you've got a full set of metric taps from M3 up to M12. You have spiral pointed, you have spiral fluted, and you have the corresponding tap drill to go with those right there. How about that? That is a super awesome gift from Thomas. Very nice looking tools right here. I believe he says these are uh, made in Germany. German made tools and I believe a lot of the tools are from Germany, is what uh, what Thomas had said. So we got that that right there, and then he had a couple more cutting tools that he had brought with him right here. We've got a nice big center drill. I believe this is a, a one inch. It's a 90 degree center drill. So we got that, and he brought a couple of uh, drill bits. This is a 14 millimeter. And this right here, he says is a tap drill, but I, I don't recall what size tap he said it was for. It's a 17.5 millimeter silver dimming style or reduced shank drill bit. But I believe he says I got a tap from somebody in one of my older videos. Uh, maybe it was 20 millimeter tap, and then this would be the actual tap drill for it. So cool stuff right there, Thomas. Thank you very much for that. And then he brought something else that's just unique to Denmark, I suppose, is these, uh, these candies right here. I've never heard of this guy. I've never seen this before. But these are hot snacks, uh, licorice-type snacks. And they're, they're different heat ranges. And he was explaining this to me on the back of the box right here. You Pretty much you have uh, the mildest starting down here all the way up to the hottest up here. Uh, number 15 and I believe that one of these <laughs> one of these chews are uh, uh, number 15 yeah this right here this one is a 15 and then you have a 12 a 9 and a 6 so the, he said that 
because I know you like hot stuff, so <laughs> he brought this over from Denmark. So that, that was pretty cool. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to try some of those out one of these days. But anyway, that was a nice, um, nice uh, visit from Thomas. So, Thomas, I know you watch. Thanks for coming by and seeing me. And I really appreciate the nice set of cutting tools right here. This is a nice set that I plan to keep around here and uh, put them to use for some uh, future jobs. All right. Thanks, man. All right. So I want to do a, a quick little segment on uh, my PPE as far as my steel-toed boots. I didn't want to uh, make a whole full-fledged video just on this topic, but I'm bringing this up because I've had a lot of people ask about it in, through uh, comments on social media and, and YouTube alike, uh, talking about what I wear for steel toe boots. And I also wanted to bring it up too because I've had a lot of people that make comments assuming that I'm not wearing steel toed boots. So I thought I'd show you the boots that I wear. These are the ones that I've been wearing. And then I got some brand new work boots right here. I just bought over the weekend, the same brand. But whenever I had first got these, I had a lot of people thought that these were like some kind of like uh, sailor shoes because of the way they're made. But in fact, these are steel toed boots and the brand name is Thorogood. And these are made in USA. You can see the little American flag right there hanging off of it. There's the logo, Thorogood. And there's the bottom of them. I'm just about got these soles wore out. I think I bought these last summer uh, over at the boot store. These are size 14. In case you're curious, I wear a size 14 boot or a size 15 Nike shoe. And um, so anyway, these are getting pretty well worn. They're still good. By the way, the boot store that I buy from here in town, they uh, they, res they resold work boots, especially like these Thoroughgoods right here. So I can take these back and get him to resold these for $85 for this particular brand right here. Uh, there's some other ones there that are 75. Uh, he said the price difference is just because Thoroughgood is proud of their product. He uses actual Thoroughgood soles whenever he does these. So they are steel toed boots. For the people that weren't sure, that is a steel toed boot. And Thoroughgood is an excellent boot. This was my very first pair of Thoroughgoods. I was turned on to them by uh, my coworker Brett. He wears them and swears by them. And so I decided to pick me up a pair. They're, they're not cheap. And um, I think these were, uh, I don't know, maybe about $200 for these pair of boots right here. And I, before this, I used to wear Wolverine boots, and that was because the uh, soles on them have that cushion. And I've always had problems with my heels, you know, heel spurs and heel pain. So I was always looking for the softest sole that I could, and Wolverines are great as far as having a nice cushy sole but they don't last very long. They might last about six months and they're completely wore out. So I decided to go Thoroughgood this time. So they, these are the ones that uh, I've been wearing even up to today. I've been wearing these right here and I plan on continue wearing those. I'm gonna get them fixed. Here is the new work boots. Again, Thoroughgood. There it is right there. You got your little American flag on it. So here's what the soles look like when they're brand new. These are not the best soles for machine shop use. I will tell you that. Um, the hot chips, if you're doing machining and you're stepping on those chips as they're coming off the machine, they're going to stick into these soles right here. So I'm, I'm always having to like, you know, pick them out of there with some pliers. But other than that, there's some, there's some, uh, they are good boots. There you go. Uh, steel toe. Got, you know, they're just, they're great work boots. They're good. That is my PPE right there, as far as my footwear goes. And then sometimes when I'm out here in the shop and I'm not doing anything um, heavy lifting or moving heavy parts, I'm just out here doing light work, sometimes I wear my Nikes because I can, I can do that. They're comfortable to me, you know. I also wanted to share this, and I shared this on Instagram. So uh, I'm trying to remember what the, the brand name is. Dan Post, that's it. So at the boot store that I had bought these from, they sell this particular brand of socks. And these are, the brand name is Dan Post. These are made in USA. They said they're made up in North Alabama somewhere. And they guarantee these socks not to ride, not to slip down your leg. And that's one of the things I always dislike about um, these type of boots is feeling the leather on your leg. 
So I got over the calf socks this time. They had packs of these things, uh, packs of 12 on sale down there. So I bought a pack of uh, 12 of them and I've been wearing these this week and I actually, I really like these socks. Um, again, Dan Post is the, is the brand of socks. So these are gonna be great over the ankle socks for wearing with these um, tall slip on boots like this, okay? So I just wanted to share that I had never heard of that brand before and I found them, and uh, I even had some other guys recommend some other socks out there. Uh, Darn Tough, I think, was one brand. I know Kevin had messaged me with another brand. I don't recall what that was. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. There's my, there's my footwear for the shop, guys. I'm trying to get a little bit of my shop reorganization done today. I spent a, a couple hours trying to get, this, get some stuff done. I just thought I'd share with you what my plans is. So this hardware rotary bin right here i'm gonna move it to the other side of the shop over there you know the grinding area uh, i love this thing you know it come from my old shop and it's excellent for storage and it's just always bothered me being over here in the in this area but i'm gonna finally move it to the other side i'm gonna use my cherry picker to pick it up and then hopefully put it on my uh, floor jack uh, pallet jack and then be able to roll it over there and then set it back down and then this spot over here is where I want to shift the shaper over that way, kind of at an angle, just so that it's not in the middle of the shop right here. So, I mean, it's gonna, still going to be kind of hanging out some because I need to be able to access my vise with the uh, rolling gantry. I have clearance problems because of the hangers of the doors up there. So i got to make sure that the vise is still out here in this area that, where the gantry can get over it. But we're going to kind of tilt it that way at an angle. And um, that's going to be where the shaper is going to go. I believe whenever I first set that there, about five years ago or whatever, I actually come in this way right here. So I'm, I'm in as far as I can get, but it'd be all right. As soon as it picks it up, it'll just kind of self-center. And that cherry picker has always been a piece of crap ever since I bought it. It's, it kind of like leans to one side, which is aggravating when you're trying to center something like that. But I'll just work with what I got. There it is. Now the fun part. This thing never wants to roll. I'm going to try to push it over this way a little bit while, while I let it down. Should center it up on those blocks there. Sitting pretty good on those timbers there. So, all right, now the real fun part going around to the other side. I think this is where it's going to live for right now. My, uh, I'm going to put it right about there. My ultimate goal later, uh, when everything's pan out right, 
is I plan to have the big air compressor in the future garage out there and things like this can go in this back corner completely out of the way but for now I'm going to put it up against the wall as close as I can and that's where it's going to stay I still got room I can pull my bandsaw out just a little bit if I need if I got something long that I need to a cut I cut some timbers to go underneath there in hopes that that will be stable enough so that anytime I want to move that I can just put that pallet jack right under there Oh yeah, there we go. I didn't get any video of it. I've just been, you know, getting after it and getting busy. So we got the, the Covell surface grinder was right here. I got it outside, picked it up with a cherry picker, set it on the pallet jack, rolled it out. And we're going to put the Vidmars over here, stack on top of each other. So I'm going to get that done. And then once that's done, I believe I'm going to attempt to get this shaper moved over all right, I'm going to try something and uh, see if it'll work. I'm going to try to pick up that cabinet with my magnet. Now this is typically used for thicker steel, so that may be a little too thin for it to hold on to, but we'll find out. You can just pick it up a little bit and then give it a good shake, and if it, if it ain't going to hold, it'll drop right away. steel that's got enough metal there to really suck to it so I always just pick it up a little bit and then kick it and shake it real hard and see if it comes off so we'll just have to do this another way all right doing some rigging with the straps and I, I got it pretty well balanced now so I think that's gonna work them things on them on them timbers there because I want to be able to easily move this thing again later if I decide I want to move it from this location because I'm tired of everything being directly on the floor where I can't get to it so uh, cut those so that it would fit on each side there I'm gonna have to center it just a little bit better though So I'm working on the shape remove now. I'm just going to point out what I, what I do. So I got my toe jack in the center. You got that relieved area you can jack it up with. So I jack that side up. I pull my board out and I've got these wooden wedges on each side. Now I'll lower it down, do the opposite side just the same.
All right, now I can get those one inch bars and slide them underneath this thing. And then we'll pick it back up and take the wedges out so that we can pry it around. All right, I think that'll do it. Repeat it on the other side. Well, I guess it's time to see if I got the strength to move this thing. I've been moving this stuff all day long. This is the this was the big boy I had to get to, and I'm not feeling good. <laughs> well, let's see if we can do it. I need to remove some of those bars. Seems like it's trying to pivot in the middle a little bit there. All right, let's try that again. Let's see if that helps me. I have to do a little bit and keep looking at it because I don't know where the perfect position for this thing is going to be at and I don't want to crowd myself up too tight against that wall. Uh, you know, you got to think getting back out one day. I don't want to get too close to it. Plus the table traverses way over that way. So it's just to move it and watch the thing. But we still got a ways to go. I don't need that much room. So we're doing good. position the bars. Checking out the, the gantry to see where it can fit in here because I'd like to go back with it a little further. So it looks like we're going to have plenty, plenty of gantry. So I can go around a little bit more and go back closer to the wall there. Too close to the wall over there. I'm thinking that's looking pretty 
pretty good right there. All right, we got her tweaked where I want it, and I'm getting ready to put that last board under there. Those are the 2x10s I bought back whenever I moved this thing in here, and I wanted to use those as a, as a foundation for the machine to sit on. And I cut notches out of the center so that I could do just this, put the toe jack in the middle, slide the board under there, because the release on each end are not wide enough for the toe jack, and then be able to get the board in there. There it sits. Not a bad looking spot for it. I think it's going to work well right here. I think it's, it's turning out just the way I was wanting it to. So now this is done. I got one more heavy move that I got to do that I want to get it done today because we're expecting some rain tomorrow and I don't, I don't want it to get wet. So we're going to go outside and I'll show you what I got out there. Alrighty, so here's the here's the new load of heavy iron This is one of the reasons why I was trying to get that stuff done in there so that I have a little bit more room Because I want to get this in the shop. So what we got is a piece of three-quarter inch steel plate 836 hot roll plate And it's 30 inches wide. It's eight foot long and this is going to be a new workbench for the middle of the shop there And that over there is the tubing that is four inch square tubing half wall and that's going to be the legs for it that old mulberry tree right there man this is the time of year where all those berries start falling off of it and making a mess so they've been they've been getting on it and you can see the <laughs> the concrete right there backing up on them so anyway we're going to use my magnet and my cherry picker and we're going to pick that plate up Something like this that you want to try to be balanced as you can. I went ahead and laid out approximately where the magnet's going to sit. I'm going to make sure there's no chips on the bottom. I want it to sit completely flat. And just rub it off. Just like that. I think we can get it. I looked up the weight of three quarter inch plate and this should be about 612 pounds. Okay. Pretty well balanced right there. Now this is what I'm talking about once you get it. Give it some good shakes. That way it shocks it and jars it and see if it's gonna lift off there. But as long as that magnet is flat and you've got some metal underneath it, it ain't gonna let go.
Okay, I managed to get in here without any injuries, and there it sits. Right, right there is out of the way because I rarely come in and out of the door, but that's going to be the temporary spot for the plate and the material until I get to it. So that's going to be the new work table right there, and then that's the that's the legs. I cut six pieces to make legs. And my idea behind this table was because of this right here, ever since I set this up and I had all this room here in the shop, I, I really like having this workbench in the middle of the shop. So I kind of worked off of this idea right here and decided to go ahead and make a, uh, a heavy duty work table that can be centralized in the shop for all areas, you know, cause like when I'm over here running the shaper, all of my wrenches and everything, my tools, are. I keep putting them right here. So I'd like to have that workbench here to work off of, you know, and, um, you know, just have a nice workbench. So a good timing today. I got these in the mail from Jack Hoying. I bought these from him. And what these are, these are, you know, machinery feet, uh, anti-vibration feet, I believe. It's a, it's a hard rubber there. And it just coincidentally, he had these on his website. I seen them, and he had six of them. And I think these are going to work great for feet for the work table. So what I plan on doing is taking some three-inch stock and, you know, cutting some pieces however long they need to be. I'll drill and tap the center for that. I believe it's three-quarter thread. And then those pieces will slip into the uh, square tube in there is three inch inside, so we'll slip a solid round in there. I'll weld it off, and then these will be on the very bottom. And that should, that should make a nice work table. Now there was some ideas to make a workbench with these guys right here too, but it just didn't really work out the way I wanted to. That's a great idea of having a workbench or those underneath a workbench. But what I wanted to do was be able to have like my trash can and my uh, shop vac underneath there possibly and some other stuff. So having those cabinets underneath that table would have, it would have just taken up all the room underneath it. So I didn't, that's why I just decided to go against that. So that's, uh, that's the festivities for the day. They're coming to an end. I've got the surface grinder right there. It's uh, supposed to rain tomorrow and then I'm going to load that thing up and I'm, I'm actually taking that to work and it, it'll be down there. So looking good. I'm, I'm happy with the location of the shaper. It's looking real good. So on to some new projects. We got, we got this coming up, but before I get to this, I have another welding project that I'm going to get started on and we are going to put the Everlast welder to use finally. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you real soon, all right?